right. Welcome back to the channel, pals. This video is going to be about our five favourite things that we have found about Portugal. Obviously, running on from the previous video, we have been disclosing why we have moved to Portugal and whereabouts we are looking for. So this is all going to factor into that. And of course, with every country, there is pros and cons. So the video to follow this will be five things that we dislike. Let's get into that. Number one. Definitely the weather. <laughs> weather is definitely up there at the top echelon of our choices and why we were motivated to move here. In England, you don't really get a summer, especially in the north. You get like one or two weeks the whole year. Whereas here, it's like, it's going to be sunny pretty much every day during the summer. Like if it's not, it's there's something happening. <laughs> Lots of rain as well in the UK. It's actually statistically more rainy in Portugal in the north at least where we are looking to buy but by millimeters but you're just not going to get them full days of overcast cloud cover and when you do get rain you get real rain comes down you've got your fall and then you've got clear sky again you've got more chance of clear skies percentage wise Along with that, you've got an increased growing season here. We're looking for somewhere where we can produce a lot of our own food. So an in a longer growing season is more preferable. It doesn't end as soon in the end of the autumn and obviously starts earlier in the spring also. So that is a massive plus for us. Plus we can't wait to try and grow some more like tropical things that you can't grow in England. Mm -hmm. um, obviously with the weather being warmer, you can grow Coconuts even. Ooh. Avocados, we've planted a few of them, <laughs> as you've seen in the videos. And fruit as well, being able to grow your own fruit, that's a massive one for us. Fruit over here is far superior than anything you get in England. How's life treating you? <laughs> the daylight hours, obviously in the UK, you've got more of a bell curve, which we'll show you on this graph that you get a lot less or two two hours less in the winter which means on an eight hour working day you're either waking up and starting when it's dark or you're coming in from work when it's dark and that's pretty depressing at the best of times here you get no less than nine hours of daylight per day even in the the depths of the winter which is obviously better for us and it's you get less daylight hours in the summer but it's just more of a of a steady average which is ideal so that wraps up the weather next up number two is property prices one of our main reasons for moving over to portugal is that you can get much more for your money than you can back at home mm -hmm. you can get a lot more for your money and obviously the the population here in portugal is substantially less than in the uk so most properties, especially if you go in rural, are going to have a lot of land with them. Even your standard cheap property, you're looking at a quarter of an acre, which is something that you just don't find in the UK to, to come with that extra luxury of that land. Because what we are looking for here in Portugal is pretty specific as far as what we want on the property is concerned. We delve into that in future videos, one of them being its own water source is very important and water security for ourselves you're not just going to have that luxury of looking for somewhere in the uk that has that so that would narrow your choices down even more so obviously price will come into it again so yeah property prices and the amount of land that you're getting with said property is up there for us numero tres wild swimming spot we came to Portugal in 2019 and we absolutely loved it. We fell in love with the country, the culture, the coastline, all, all different parts of it. The wild rivers and the coast and wild swimming. I like a wild swim. Since we've got the dog as well now, obviously she likes getting in rivers and the likes. With it being so hot, Portugal seems to have, every village has, it's, if there's a river nearby, it has like its own, almost like a swim pool to make out of the river. These fluvials. If that's amazing. Pronunci pr pronunciation but it's basically the the dam off the river it's like a, a open swimming pool natural swimming pool it is obviously the dam river and you can go for a swim and it's just a nice day out and it feels like you've got a holiday on your doorstep which is only two minutes down the road so 
yeah, that's up there for us. Cheap days out, which is what we love being van lifers, and yeah, that's number three. Don't know. Yeah, crime rate. <laughs> <laughs> Numero cuatro. So number four on our list is the crime rate. Portuguese crime, we haven't got any experience of it personally. Obviously we've had no problems when we've been here ourselves, but we lived here for a very short amount of time and we can only go off what is online basically. And but for, well, our own experience, the village that we're in, we feel like we could leave our door open and nothing would happen. Like mm -hmm. it's just a very a homely feel. Mm -hmm. Everyone has each other's back. Mm. Portugal's obviously still got a lot of its national identity and a lot of people are very very religious here. I think that ties in well with the crime rate being as reduced as it is obviously out here in the rural parts. There's next to no crime at all. In the cities you are going to get pickpockets and your opportunist crime and stuff like that but as far as the statistics online Portugal Crime rate is on the massive decline and it is overall one of the safest, safer places in Europe. Five is the people. For us, we've only had positive experiences with the locals here and the Portuguese. Um, they've been really welcoming to the village, to the country. They'll bend over backwards to help you out. Um, and it's just a lovely, a lovely feeling to know that you're accepted within a different culture. Yeah, I would agree. It's been, we've just been taken in as, as their own really. I think Portuguese people do like the English as a rule anyway and especially out here in the country this is a sort of similar similar setup village-wise that we're going to be looking in to living where it's not a lot of people and there's a community everybody knows everybody and like we have here we bake people's people cakes and they give us bags of vegetables, stuff like that, where it's it's close knit, if you nice like. Community. Yeah, yeah. community community vibes. Something that you would expect, like back in the back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, back in the UK. Yeah, that's a sort of the the feel and the times that we we are looking for. So the people is a massive one. Obviously, there's there's, there's an exception to every rule, and you are going to get people who are not very nice people, as you will everywhere. But as a rule. When you if you're well travelled and you visit nations, you you'll have a an idea that you'll think, oh well, this country's people aren't very nice, or this country's people are very nice. And I think Portugal is up there with some of the friendliest people that we've experienced when we've been travelling around. So the people would definitely be up there, and makes its way in at number five. So. <laughs> Next video will be about five of our least favourite things about Portugal. So, thank you for watching, as always. Give us a like and leave a comment. Let us know what your favourite things are about the country and if there's anything you think we should check out. And we will see you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>